iOS 17.4 Beta 4 just dropped today. And as you see, it comes with several new interesting changes and features. Let's talk about it. So first things first, there is no RCS support included in this beta. We know it's coming, but it's not in 17.4 beta 4. So today Apple is announcing a brand new security feature for iMessage that's actually already baked into the 17.4 beta. It's called PQ3. It's a post quantum cryptographic protocol that's all focused on protecting your iMessage data. So here's what Apple has to say. Today we are announcing the most significant cryptographic security upgrade in iMessage history with the introduction of PQ3, a groundbreaking post quantum cryptographic protocol that advances the state of the art of end to end secure messaging. With compromised resilient encryption and extensive defenses against even highly sophisticated quantum attacks, PQ3 is the first messaging protocol to reach what we call level three security, providing protocol protections that surpass those in all other widely deployed messaging apps. To our knowledge, PQ3 has the strongest security properties of any at scale messaging protocol in the world. That's Apple's quote. So why does Apple feel like post-quantum cryptography is important enough to launch it in iMessage for 17.4? Well, here's the thing. Security researchers believe that within the next decade, that quantum computers, you know, the super powerful computers will be powerful enough to crack existing encryption standards that we use today. The existing end-to-end -end encryption, for instance, in iMessage, on previous versions of iOS. Now to be fair, Signal, which is a very security focused messaging service, they launched post quantum cryptography uh, last fall. Uh, so Apple isn't the very first to do this, but they do take it another step. While Signal has what Apple is labeling level two post quantum key establishment, Apple takes it another step. They call it level three, where they not only have post quantum key establishment, but they actually regenerate keys on an ongoing basis. So this initial key and that ongoing rekeying allows iMessage to, to shore up itself, basically. So if a key is compromised, that rekeying allows it to basically re-secure that conversation. So the real threat comes with harvest now, decrypt later. So basically gather all that information that you can. You can't decrypt it right now, but basically just sit on it and wait until the computers are powerful enough to be able to crack the current encryption schemes. Now, such quantum computers don't exist yet, but this is all about protecting your current data and future data from future attacks once these computers become powerful enough. For more information, be sure to read the full post over at 9to5Mac. I'll be sure to link it down below in the description. But basically, if you upgrade to the 17.4 beta on your iPhone, on your iPad, on your Apple Watch, or your Mac, you're in. So one of the cool things about 17.4 beta 4 is it introduces for the very first time an updated hello screen that includes the picture associated with your Apple ID. This is the same picture that you see when you go into your Apple ID settings in the settings app. Uh, it's the same picture that you would see on a Mac as well. Now I know some of you are probably thinking this because I thought it for like a split second myself. Does the presence of a profile photo mean we have user profiles that we can log in to different accounts? No, this is probably not happening. In fact, there's no indication that that's happening, but this is a new hello screen and it looks kind of cool. But for real Apple, I don't expect user profiles on the iPhone. It's a personal device, but we need user profiles on the iPad, please. It's long overdue. If you want user profiles, leave me a thumbs up down below. Let me know what you guys think. So let's talk about something really exciting, shall we? How about build numbers? Of course, I'm just kidding. Build numbers are about as boring as it gets, but for those keeping score at home, this is build number 21E5209B. So in iOS 17.4, Apple Maps will present a new instrument cluster experience with information about upcoming maneuvers that can be swapped between the main display and the instrument cluster display by tapping the map configuration button in the upper right hand corner of the Apple Maps main screen. Now, just to be clear, this is not the, the new CarPlay experience that Apple debuted at WWDC last year. That is still to come and that will be featured on cars from Aston Martin and from Porsche. The update to CarPlay for iOS 17.4 is not the next generation CarPlay interface, but it supports cars that are already on the road today, like the Polestar 2 that support the dual screen CarPlay interface that Apple rolled out 
back in 2019. Chances are you probably haven't tried a Polestar 2. They're not that popular, but they actually have a really good implementation of that dual screen CarPlay setup. Check out the full post on 9to5Mac for more as we walk through this. The really cool thing though, in that CarPlay setup, the navigation appears in incredibly full and rich detail right behind the steering wheel, which frees up the main display for other things, other apps and stuff like that. So don't feel like you have to go out and splurge and buy an Aston Martin or a Porsche to get a good CarPlay experience because it already exists right now in a very few limited amount of cars, like the Polestar for instance. So one of the most noteworthy changes in Beta 4 is that battery health and charging optimization are now separated. They're no longer shoehorned in the same location. They now have their own respective sections within the battery settings. So this battery health update will show the condition of your iPhone's battery at just a glance, very similar to how it works on the Mac right now. Like on a Mac, it'll tell you if your battery health is normal or it'll tell you if your battery needs servicing. And presumably the same thing will happen here on the iPhone. So it just is kind of reassuring to look at your battery health and see, oh, it's normal, I'm good to go. But the changes to battery health don't stop there. Now, Apple has moved pertinent details like cycle count and manufacturer date and first use date from the about section of settings general into the battery settings. And that just makes sense. Like why well, have to venture to about to see things related to the battery? So now everything is in one place under battery health. And one cool thing we learned today is that iPhone 15 batteries have a longer lifespan than Apple initially expected. So Apple tells 9to5Mac that the iPhone 15 can retain 80% of its original battery capacity at up to 1000 cycles. Previously, it was thought that it would retain up to 80% of its battery capacity up to 500 cycles. So we can see that these batteries are a lot more robust, a lot more resistant to degradation, than initially expected. And that's a good thing. This obviously only applies to the iPhone 15 batteries. So just keep in mind that this doesn't apply to even something as recent as the iPhone 14. And remember, iOS 17.4 brings a ton of other features as well that we've covered, new emoji, and of course, all the new EU changes regarding uh, third-party app stores and things of that nature, third-party browsers, browser engines. It's a pretty gargantuan update. And no doubt we're gonna see a lot more coming down the pipeline, but I have a feeling that we're gonna see the release candidate fairly soon, and then iOS 17.4 will be shipping in the very near future. So ladies and gentlemen, let me know what you guys think about these updated changes in iOS 17.4. If you appreciate informative videos like this, leave a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button for more videos. And also we have a new podcast, it's called Overtime. If you haven't checked it out, be sure to check that out and you can subscribe to it as well. Again, this is Jeff Benjamin with 9to5Mac. I'll talk to you guys and gals later.